So it's 1968. What's, what's the, the key to success? The body count. We did the counting. The South Vietnamese did the burying. So there are bodies all over the place. So we're trying to figure out how many, how many dead North Vietnamese Viet Cong bodies are there yeah. in, in this area. And we come up with a number about 900. And we submit the number. None of us really knew what we were talking about because we're depending on a lot of people counting. And commanding officer in the train says, that's impossible. <laughs> so we send the people out again, said count a second time. And we come up with about 825. That's impossible. <laughs> so they send the counting team. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like... Absurdly. The theater of the absurd. They send the counting team. The counting team counts, and it's in the high 700s. And that's the accepted figure. I, I think as I look back, and I think it's in the literature, it's about 725 or something like that. So was it in their interest to have a, a oh, lower count to seem less aggressive? Was that the idea? Well, the, inter the interest was our success compared to North Vietnamese Viet Cong success was always measured in casualties. If we took a lot of casualties, something was going wrong. If they took a lot of casualties from our perspective, something was going right. Yeah. So the more bodies we can count that they lost, the more successful our offensive or de defense would be. Um, that's why the loss of Americans was, was so crucial to the way the war was fought. In, in 1969, Life magazine published a, a picture, it was an article called One Week's Dead. And there was something like 200. There, were, there was no print to this. There was no narrative. It was pictures and names and hometowns. And, yeah. you know, people are looking at this in 1969, and they're asking, how long is this going to go on for? The body count of Americans is increasing and increasing and increasing. The numbers are piling up. Did, were there a lot of casualty, Amer American casualties, you know, around where you were or in the city of Kunkum itself? Not that I know of. Yeah. Um, there weren't that many Americans around, and most of them were stationed in our compound. We had the military advisors, the MACV people, yeah. of which I was one. We had the 299th Transportation Battalion. We had the 43rd Signal Company, which was adjacent to us. And then we had a, a Special Forces Command Unit, a B team. Um, and we were all in the compound. There, was, there were a couple of people, as I remember, killed in the 40, 43rd Signal. They were right on the edge of, of a field where there was an, yeah. an, a, a, a frontal attack. Um, we were in back of them. And we, we were sustained only one injury. One of the guys I work with caught a piece of shrapnel in his eye. And we said, you know, Larry, you're going home. <laughs> and Larry came back two days later. <laughs> he, said, he said, they pulled it, they put a bandage on it, and they said, go back. <laughs> so wow. there, were, there were very few casualties right around us. But there was, there was a, lot of, uh, a lot of fear. A lot of fear, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you, you mentioned that in the questionnaire that it stays with you, you know, count the, counting with all the bodies. And mm -hmm. the, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, one of the, the things that has always been difficult to think about is that, you know, we did the counting, the South Vietnamese did the bearing. Well, for the most part, the, in, in large kinds of situations like this, they didn't have the, uh, the means to do it. It would mean using shovels, and it's a very tedious process. Yeah. So in the field next to the 43rd Signal, which is adjacent to our command mm -hmm. headquarters, there were many, many bodies. The, um, the armored, the, uh, in, the, let's try that one again. The artillery unit had three cannons that lowered their muzzles to ground level, and they shot grape shot into the field. And there were a lot of casualties. Mm -hmm. They had to be buried. So. Um, we requisitioned a number of um, plows 
from the from the 299th transportation and the, the plows dug up big furrows and pushed the bodies in and you know you think about this today It's been nearly 50 years. And I still have trouble with this. I thought it would it'd be easy to get past it, but yeah. it's never been easy. You know, I'm, I'm watching. My view of the war had already been, been affected. You know, I was, I was on the kind of the verge of turning against the war at that point. After Tet, at the very end, when we're burying these bodies and pushing them back into the, into the graves, I'm saying to myself, you know, I can, I can account for the people around me as, as Americans. You know, somebody's injured. I know where they're going. They're going to the hospital. They're going home. But we know where they're going. They're serving a year here. They're, they're leaving. We could track our people. But when a, a young man left from a village in North Vietnam, they were gone. And they might have been gone for five years, 10 years. They might have come back, but they're out, of, they're out of sight. And the North Vietnamese units that were caught in the field outside of our, our compound were being buried in mass. So I'm saying to myself, and, you know, I... I continue to say it to myself. You know, you, you, raise, you raise kids and you have high hopes for them. You know, you, you want to see them go through life and become parents. And, you know, here, here are dozens of bodies being pushed in, into mass graves and their parents will, will never know where they are. <laughs> in, In Buddhism, and I'm not a Buddhist, so I've only been told this, but in Buddhism, it's very important to, to understand where the, the bodies are so that you can, you can track the spirit of that body because yeah. bodies cr carry spirits with them. If you don't know where the body is, you, you don't know where the, the spirit is either. So it's lost. Yeah, like no, no name. <laughs> right. No right. And even up to a few years ago, there were parents, old, old people coming down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. <laughs> so it's, it's you, know, you, 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 you know, you talk about what you carry with you. Yeah. Tim O'Brien wrote a book called The Things He Carried. I think, I think veterans still carry these things, you know, whether they want to admit it or not, they're painful things to carry. Yeah. 